All right, let me go through some of these. You guys submitted these through the week. We are in the stump the chump segment. These are all of the objections that were turned in. The first one is, why should I pay you X amount of commission when XYZ agent will accept less? And so my question or my response to that would be, well, I specialize in helping sellers put more money in their pocket. And anytime I get an opportunity to hear of an agent who is discounting their commission, it usually gives me an indication of how they handle their negotiating. Well, what do you mean? Well, when you spoke to that agent for the, about the commission rate, did they start with a higher number and then come down after you asked? Yeah, they said blank. We asked them if they would work with us a little bit on it, and they said, sure, because of our price point, they would. So why won't you? Well, and that, and that interaction took, what, just a few moments? Yeah, it, it happened you know, within a few moments. So if that agent isn't strong enough to stand, stand up for their own self-worth, how strong could they possibly be when it comes to standing up to your home's value? Because if they were that quickly willing to reduce their fee just to get your business, how fast are they going to encourage you to reduce your price to get a deal? They're already displaying a lack of strength in protecting their own value. And they did it within a matter of moments. So how strong could they possibly be when it comes to standing up to your sales price? Okay. So I would, I would be silly to sell now and lose my 2.9% interest rate. We'll, stale, we'll stay here until we see the rates come back down to 4 or 5%. All right, so let me just say, before I hop into the role play, um, people don't make moves in most cases for financial reasons. Uh, if it's an investment property, that's financial, fine. Um, if it's an estate, that's financial. They don't, you know, whatever, it's, it's, we'll hold on to it, it's not costing us anything, right? People don't, for the most part, make moves for financial reasons. What do they make moves for? They make moves for lifestyle changes lifestyle improvements. You see, even if someone is downsizing, they're still actually improving their lifestyle. They have less yard to take care of. Maybe they get everything on one level. Maybe they're able to put more money in their pocket because they've got a lower mortgage payment. So when somebody says to me they don't want to sell because they, they, want, they don't want to lose their interest rate, my question to them is, if you don't mind me asking, if the interest rate was 4 or 5%, you have to start with that because that's how I'm gonna get them in the frame of mind of thinking about this. Right, Ralph? We gotta get them in the frame of mind of their outcome in order for them to answer honestly. So I start off with, so let me ask you a question. If rates were between four and 5% today, why would you be moving? Why is moving a consideration for you? Well, we would be moving because we don't need all this space. You know, our utility bills are two, $300 a month and we don't even use the upstairs, right? I'm, I'm getting them to, to kind of sell themselves on, wh on wh what they would gain. You know, we would be closer to amenities because we want to move to downtown, just gonna pick downtown Detroit so we can walk around and go to Starbucks and we don't have to drive to the grocery store and so forth. So let me ask you a question. Do you think it's possible that someone else in your shoes might also be waiting for rates to come down? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I have all kinds of friends that, you know, they've got a great interest rate. It seems like that's the biggest problem, you know, you have right now, Jeff, in the real estate industry. Oh, it's, de it's definitely a thing. There's no doubt about it. And let me ask you a question. If and when, because it's not a guarantee, if and when rates do come down, do you think that there will be more buyers that enter the market than right now or less buyers once rates come down? Oh, I would imagine probably more because, we're, yeah, we're not alone. Yeah, you're right. Anytime we see a decline in rates and rates become more attractive, we see an increase in buyer activity. In fact, I don't know if you paid attention to what happened in 2021 and 2022, but when rates were at that number, buyers were doing every single extreme they could think of to get their home purchase offer accepted. I mean, paying 30, 40, 50,000 over appraised value, left and right. 
Well, you've got a 2.9% rate. Did you have to deal with some of that? Oh my God, there were 14 offers on this house. So the reason why I'm pointing this out to you is because if you wait, you may get a better rate, there's no doubt. And you're delaying your lifestyle that you're ultimately after, and you're gonna be paying more for the house. So does it really matter if you lose that rate if you have to pay more for the home anyways? Hmm, never thought of that. There you go. Jeff, I need to think about it and I need more time than you stepping outside for a few minutes while you return calls. So as I teach at the listing appointment, when they say they need to think about it, my classic is, well, okay, I understand that. And if you don't already know the answer to this, you should write this down. When a seller or buyer, when a, in my case, because I work with a lot of sellers, when a seller tells me they need to think about it, what it usually means is that they would just like some privacy. So I'm attaching a new meaning to them saying they need to think about it. When a seller tells me they need to think about it, what it usually means, this is what I'm saying to the seller, what it usually means is that you would like to talk in private. And I can totally respect that and appreciate that. And why don't we do this? I'll step outside, da 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 so, and I'll return calls or do whatever. So then when they say to me, well, no, 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 we're gonna need a little bit more time than that. My next go-to is, well, um, I can completely appreciate that if you need some more time. And since we're all here, um, before I give you that time, is there anything that's kind of fresh on your mind right now that you'd like me to answer for you? So since we're all here right now, is there anything fresh on your mind that you'd like me to answer for you? And I'll tell you about 50% of the time, they respond with, oh, honestly, Jeff, we're not a fan of your price. Or, well, honestly, we're not a fan of your commission. Or, honestly, da 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 So sometimes it's just, no, 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 no. We don't make, or we have other agents coming out. They might give you another objection. So when the stepping outside is ineffective, I'll say, well, since we're all here and it's fresh on your mind, let's, let's talk out loud. What is it that, that is stopping you from wanting to move forward with me? And then usually they'll give you another objection to handle. Uh, I have a great relationship with my realtor. I love them. They have done a great job for us. So we're going to need to stick with them for now. Well, I can certainly appreciate your loyalty to them. And I can only hope that my clients are just as loyal to me as you are, as, uh, you are to them. And I'm curious, what is it that they're going to be doing differently this time around? And don't you believe it to be a little bit of a disservice that they didn't do that in the first place? I can certainly appreciate you want to stick with your agent. I mean, I, I hope all my clients want to stick with me. I love that loyalty. Thank you, you know, for your loyalty to your agent. And I'm curious, what is it that they're going to be differently this time around? And if they are going to be doing something differently, isn't it a bit of a disservice that they didn't do that in the first place? My answer to that one. Why should I sell my home in this market. Why should I sell my home in this market? Again, money is secondary. People move for lifestyle changes. So um, maybe you shouldn't sell your home in this market. Why are you moving in the first place? It's kind of similar to the last one. I got to dig deep to find their motivation. And by the way, for the sake of time, I just realized there's two things. There is one thing I did during that appointment that we didn't point out. You might have noticed I asked a question in two different ways. I asked them, you know, what their goal is or why they're moving. I also asked them the same, a follow-up question, what's important about that? And that's where she brought up, you know, having MS and that's why they want to move down there. The lesson here is the more you ask deeper questions, the more you find out about their motivation and the real reason, and you can use that in your dialogue with them when they say things to you like, well, why should I even sell now? You just told me why you should sell now. So dig deeper. The other thing I was going to tell you at the end of the presentation, for sake of time, I didn't go into the um, social media discussion. Remember I said during our social media, the, the, the image I put on the screen, had I had listing paperwork up there and had I handed him a pen and, handed him, had, and, and had him sign before I left the house, I would have made sure that they understood. Now, if it's okay with you guys, we do a lot on social media. So in fact, why don't we do this? You guys are on Instagram? Oh yeah, yeah, we're on Instagram. Okay, good. I'm going to, what, what's your handle? I'm going to follow you. And yep, is that you? Yeah, yeah, that's me. Okay, good. I'm going to follow you. Make sure that that worked. Oh yeah, there you are. Okay, go ahead and follow me back because I, I may tag you or use you as a collaborator in my post so that way we can get more eyeballs on your home. Is that okay? You guys already saw the script. 
But what I'm saying is I'm, I'm going back to that because I just remembered I didn't do it here because I knew I was probably running out of time. So make sure at the end of every single listing appointment when you get a contract signed, you're friending, you're requesting, you're following. So that way I would even add to that and you know our marketing team is gonna create a reel on your home. You familiar with reels? Oh yeah, <laughs> I watch them all the time. TikTok, da 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 da, yep, yep, okay. So we're gonna create one about your house. If we create one and send it to you, would you see any value in sharing it? Yeah, sure, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, good, because then it could get in front of, in fact, one better, why don't you tag me so that way I can share it to my story. Those are the conversations that sellers want you to have with them now. Because if you're not talking about social media in that way, your competitors are. And you're gonna lose every time to a savvy seller. And before you start to tell me that your clientele is old and they don't even use social media, doesn't matter, their kids do. And so their kids are saying, mom, dad, I know you guys are gonna be moving. Who are you interviewing? Oh, we're meeting with so-and-so. What do their kids do? They look them up on they look you guys up on Instagram and Facebook. They look us up. So you got to have a presence there. Okay. First objection, Jeff. In this market, I could easily sell the house myself. What do I need you for? Well, first things first. It sounds like this is something from a for sale by owner, and my response to a for sale by owner in that setting would be to focus on for whoever asked this question, to focus on your value of getting them to the closing table and not in helping them find buyers. In fact, I'll even say to the for sale by owner, oh my gosh, uh, you're right. You, you don't need me to find a buyer today. With inventory being so low, you can probably put up a for sale sign and have three buyers tomorrow. I don't blame you for thinking that. And did you know, right now, two thirds of real estate agent assisted transactions do not make it to the closing table at the same price and terms as originally negotiated? Did you know that? Right now, you have a 66% chance of entering into an agreement with a buyer more than half the time that, that contract's getting renegotiated or falling apart because of inspection, appraisal, uh, occupancy, disagreements, finance issues. So you're not hiring me to find a buyer. You don't need me for that. You're hiring me to get it to a closing table. Because now let me step out of the role play for a second. When you think about your transactions, all right, let's just say your last five transactions. Honestly, how many of them got to the closing table with no issues at all? Think about it, five, last five transactions. How many of them got to the closing table with no challenges or no changes and no addendum? Not many. Now, if you tell them, hey, you're gonna have a 100% chance, they're not gonna believe you. So at least we know it's gonna be always at least two thirds. So when a for sale by owner or any seller says to you, hey, I can sell this on my own, I don't, I, don't, I don't need, what do I need you for? Well, here's the deal. You can sell this on your own. You can find a buyer probably tomorrow with inventory being as low as it is. And did you know you right now have a two thirds chance of getting into an agreement with the buyer and having to renegotiate that sale because of something that happens through the transaction? That's where I come in. My value is getting you to the closing table. And then from there, I just follow up for five weeks. Jeff, the last agent that was just here said we can list for 1,000 flat fee. Can you match or beat that? They're doing professional photos as well. Nope. <laughs> What's the most embarrassing listing appointment objection you, you have had? Most embarrassing listing appointment objection. Well, I wouldn't necessarily call it an objection, but I've gone to the ho wrong house multiple times. I mean, I don't know how that happens, but <laughs> multiple times. I mean, to the point of where like I was invited in and shook the seller's hand, and went right into the script. That I thought they were the seller, and they, show, uh, they didn't show me to their kitchen. I said, I said, would you mind showing me to your kitchen? They said, they said well, what are you here for? Is this one, two, three Banana Street? That's our neighbor. We've done that multiple, mul not just, I mean literally, probably I can, I, I'm almost to two hands that I, I've done that. I don't know how it happens. I don't know how it happens. Um, embarrassing thing, I, I've done this probably multiple times too. Uh, I mean, you have to understand, since 2003, I mean, even, you know, I had 10 years, from 2008 to 2019, I never dropped below 100 sales. I mean, that was, that was my number. 
if I'm going to be, if Glover U is going to be credible, I had, I had two things I had to do. I had to get a team to 1,000 units, so that way the leaders would respect me. I had to, to be able to show that I could recruit, train, and develop, and coach, so that way leaders in the industry would respect me. And I needed to personally sell 100 homes a year, not once, not twice, not three times, but 10 years in a row. That was my number. And by the way, when I did both those things, the next year we launched Glover U. I felt it was appropriate. I had the credibility to do so. So if I'm selling 100 homes a year, most of them listings, by the way, out of 100 sales, you know, 70 to 80 percent were always sellers. Um, you go on a lot of appointments. I mean, just do the math. So there was a lot of appointments where I brought the wrong comps, and that is a little embarrassing. But here's how you pivot from that when that happens: um, you just turn it into a two-step appointment. So you know, I've multiple times I've had to open my folder and look and see, oh gosh, I got the wrong comps. Actually, I did it last year on this stage. You guys remember that when I did the listing presentation, we had to stop the presentation. So I guess I gotta work on my, my GPS skills and I gotta work on my comps. And so I just turned it into a two-step appointment. I, I slowly take the comps out of the folder. I've, had, I've done this enough. I know, this, I know the technique when I do this. I slowly take the comps out of the folder and I'm distracting them with my papers and putting them right on top. Because you don't want them to see that you brought the wrong comps if this happens. So I put them right on top and I say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, here's how this is gonna go. I like to do my appointments in two steps. You won't ever find that in our listing script, by the way. <laughs> But you have to pivot. So I'd like to review your house, ask you some questions, and just to make sure I get it right, I'm going to come back with a full-blown market analysis. You know, a lot of agents will come in here and they'll just throw some actives and solds at you. I'm actually going to go a little bit deeper now that I've been in your house. I want to treat it like an appraiser would. I'm going to do a very thorough analysis. I'm going to come back and, and go through that with you. Does that sound fair? Oh, yeah, we love that. <laughs> Next, do you have a lucky pair of underwear that you wear to listing appointments? You have a lucky pair of underwear that you wear to listen to once. Why would you wear underwear? <laughs> Somebody gets it. It's a different way of life, higher quality. I really want to sell, but I want to wait to see what happens with the election if I'm going to make more money or less as it's dependent on who wins. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, let me ask you a question. Um, what happens if you wait and values go down? I mean, either way, it's a gamble. Typically, in 22 years of doing this, the year leading up to an election is actually better than the year after because the current candidate is working to get reelected, which, of course, is the case in this situation. So based on history, now actually may be a better time to sell. And at the end of the day, I don't have a crystal ball. So let me ask you a question. If you were to sell now, where would you move to? And then what I would do, I'm stepping out of the role play, what I would do, I would go back to where, when, why, what they gain, what the benefit will be. And then I'll ask them, now, of course, it's a risk either way, but why would you want to delay all that for another six months to a year? Because if prices go down, now you're going to want to wait two or three years for them to come back up with no guarantee. Okay. Buyer asked to work directly with listing agent to save commission. Obviously, you're on the buy side, and so you're trying to um, retain this buyer. Well, I would say this. So you're trying to retain a buyer that's saying, I'm just going to work with the listing agent. Okay, now I'm putting my buyer agent hat on here. So I'm going to say, I, you can certainly work directly with the listing agent, and I'm curious, how do you plan on getting a better deal on the home by working with the agent who is hired to get the best deal for the seller. I mean, think about that for a second. The listing agent is hired to get top dollar for the seller. How will that financially benefit you? It won't. Okay. Um, Jeff, we would like to pray on it. Well, I can certainly appreciate that. And I absolutely respect that. And who do you think sent me? <laughs> you guys have heard that one before. Seller says he needs to sell all his belongings. Uh, he's a collector. Won't put it in storage. Won't throw anything away. Costs too much. Da, 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 da. Here's the deal. Whenever you get somebody that wants to do work to their house or you know, sell all their stuff off or, well, we need to declutter all this, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, stop right now. I have dozens of stories of sellers 
who have made improvements to their home and lost money on those improvements, don't put another dime or another piece of energy into improving your home until I take a look. And I'm going to be around the corner from you later tonight. I'll swing by and I'll give you some suggestions on things you can do. I can probably save you a ton of money. Well, you know, the house isn't really in show condition and da 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 da. Nope, don't do anything. Leave it just the way it is. In fact, I had a seller just last spring. They, they called me up and said, Jeff, we're so excited. We got everything ready. We put in a new kitchen. We did this. They put $80,000 into their house. And you know what? It had only improved their value by about $30,000. Can't have that happen. So let me come out first. So use that as a reason to come out first. Actual text led from a, text from a lead today. Uh, I know my house is worth in the lower 600s. I've had several offers I don't want to list. In other words, you're telling them maybe it's worth less. Me, I responded with listing the home will maximize how much you can make. The lead responded with, I understand, but I'm not interested in that. I'm very fair and reasonable and know some people that would love my house. Okay, write this down. Number one, whoever this person is, you need listing mastery because we, we teach this at a high level. Write this down. No one is excited about listing their home for sale. Do not talk to them about listing their home for sale. Talk about where they're going and why. No one's excited about having a sign in the yard, a lockbox. Remove that from your vocabulary. Why are you selling? And then from there, I would probably use, in this case, uh, an example. I would use the auction effect as an example. You guys might remember back in the day, banks would you know, put, put the price low and they'd put right in remarks, we're not accepting any offers the first seven days because they want to fully maximize the home's value. You, here's another thing I want you to write down. You can't change someone's mind with one reason. You got to give them two to three examples. You can't just say, well, if we put the house on the market, then we can maximize the value. How does that maximize the value? Tell me how that process is going to work. Why does that maximize my home's value? Give me specifics. I work in a small geographic, higher end resort market area. How do I overcome possible buyer sellers who state very long term? Oh, they have very long term relationship with current agents. They feel like they're stepping on toes by switching to me. Have no fear. You can't be scared of this. I mean, do you know how often I've went up against the number one agent in the neighborhood, the agent that lives in the neighborhood? By the way, almost every time I lost more times than I won. But that's okay, I still won sometimes. So I don't care who owns the neighborhood, I'm going after it. And by the way, that's why we teach hybrid farming. The person that's been sending postcards and doing all that other stuff, they're gonna lose when they hear from me once per month. A friend who wants to buy my house and his attorney will be able to do the paperwork. We don't really need you. Okay, well, hold on. They're doing the paperwork, I get that, but what about the negotiations? Pre-closing, post-closing, occupancy, financing, getting, you know, this is where you'd go back to, you're hiring me to get you the closing table. I'm going with a Redfin agent who is going to do it for less. Good luck. So if it, they tell me an agent is going to do, do it for less, I would say, by the way, we may have a few Redfin agents in the audience, so it's, I would have done that for any company, by the way. Um, if they tell me that, I'm going to say, well, that's great. And you know, there's a lot of good agents out there that are offering their services at a bit of a discount, and I think that's awesome. I don't blame you for considering that. And I'm curious, was this an offer that they made to you right there on the spot, or is this something that you negotiated? And usually they're all real proud. Oh, no, 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 we negotiated. All right, yeah. And how long did that negotiation take? Well, what do you mean? Well, like from the time you asked for a discount to the time they gave it to you, how long did that take? Well, I mean, we, we told them that if, if, we, if they lowered their commission, we would go with them. So it was like right away. Interesting. So they reduced their fee for you right away. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So if they were that quick to reduce their fee to earn your business, how fast will they be at discounting your sales price when it comes to negotiations of selling your home? I mean, honestly, they just displayed to you a lack of confidence in their ability. They just displayed to you a low-level ability to negotiate by telling you they would reduce their fee. So they're showing you up front the strength of their negotiation skills. Now, one thing that's more valuable than a half a percent or a percent is your home's value. And if they're already showing you that they're willing to discount themselves, how do you think they're going to stand up for your sales price? I don't want to sell my house um, because there are no houses to buy. Well, first and foremost, the good news is every, no one that's worked with me is homeless. So 
the good news is everyone's been able to buy a house, and I understand inventories are low, and I'm curious, how long have you been looking for a home? Well, because where I'm going to go with this one is I'm going to show them that there are homes out there for them to buy, and actually, when inventories are low, I'm going to take them out and start showing them houses, even if I don't have their listing. Now, I would normally not recommend this in a normal market or in a, saw, in a buyer's market because you're going to waste a lot of time because we don't know if their listing's going to sell. But if they have a listing that's in an area where we know the values are hot or we know it's going to sell, then I'm going to risk my time to get out there and get them excited about finding something that fits their needs. In a soft market, I would not recommend it. In this market, normal to slightly hot market, I would get them out, build rapport, show them houses, get them excited. You know how, you know how this goes. All of a sudden, they find something, they fall. We got to get it on the market right away. We got to get the price drop right away. We got to get this thing moved right away. Jeff, I can appreciate that you can think you can sell my home better than me, but Jeff, I was a realtor for 25 years. I think I can sell my home for sale by owner just fine. Well, I can certainly appreciate that, and I believe you can sell your home by owner just fine, just fine. And I'm not concerned about you finding a buyer because with low inventory, you'll probably find one. You don't need me. And what I have found is many for sale by owners like yourself, even if they do find a buyer, struggle to get to a closing table. For instance, did you know that right now two thirds of real estate agent assisted transactions do not make it to the closing table at the same price and terms as originally negotiated? Did you know that? That means you have a 66% chance of having to go back to the drawing board and start over. And so the reason why I'm sharing that with you is because most for sale by owners are not hiring me to find a buyer. They're hiring me to get it to a closing table. My list price to sales price right now is 99.4%. The board of realtors average is 97.3. So if you factor in, because I know you're offering concessions to help the buyer pay their agent, if you factor just that in alone, I end up netting you more than the market will net you and it works out to about the same in terms of your costs. So I believe that you can probably get it done on your own with inventory being low, and wouldn't it make more sense to work with someone who's gonna end up putting more money in your pocket anyways? I mean, honestly, did you even calculate the amount of time you're gonna spend dealing with this transaction? Let me ask you, what do you do for a living? I do this, okay. You get paid a rate, a salary, and of course it's factored in, and I'm sure you've done the math of what you're worth per hour. How many hours, honestly, do you think you'll put into this transaction? You were in real estate before, so you know what it takes place. 10 hours, 15 hours, 20 hours, probably just 10 or 15 hours. Okay, well, based on what you just told me, there's three or four grand right there. So honestly, how much are you really saving by trying it on your own? The answer is you're not. Okay. Please say Will Huffman's name and win me $1,000. Mike Delgado. There we go. Okay. What's the rest of this? Oh, real question. Okay. Thanks, Mike. If we do everything you say and I still don't hit my preferred monetary net, will you at that point pay me the difference? No. Jeff. It sounds like you're a great agent to sell our house, but we want someone local. It's over an hour drive to Plymouth. Oh, I've heard this so often. I can certainly appreciate you want someone local. And let me ask you, what's your definition of local? Well, I mean, someone whose office is right here in town. Someone whose physical office is right here in town, right? Yeah. Well, I can do you one better. Do you want to know why? Why is that? Because my office is in your driveway. Can I explain? Seriously. You don't want an agent who's sitting in their office all day. You want an agent who's out showing homes, out listing property, and out active in the market. My office is in your driveway because I'm on the road every single day meeting with buyers and sellers. And can I tell you why you actually may be an advantage having my physical office be an hour away? Sure, why is that? Well, you see, when you list with me with a location one hour away, not only am I going to promote your home locally here, but I'm going to be promoting your home an hour away to all the buyers out there that may be moving this way. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get an agent who knows the neighborhood inside and out and sells plenty of homes in the community, and I'm going to be promoting your home across town. 
Could you see how that would be a benefit to you, having more exposure to your home versus having exposure just here in town? Yeah, I guess I never looked at it that way. And that's why it's actually an advantage to work with an agent whose office is further away. Okay, well, let's go to work then. If I find my own buyer, can we negotiate a lower commission? Whatever you want. If I find my own buyer, can I negotiate a lower commission? Well, certainly at the end of the day, I'm not short-sighted and I want to help get the transaction done. And if that ends up being the case, that might be something that I'm open to. And if it's all right with you, what I have found is that the buyers that we're able to generate because of our marketing and potentially getting your home in a multiple offer situation are almost always going to end up paying more than family or friends. And again, I'm not gonna stand in the way of a transaction. So when an offer comes in, if it's from a family member or a friend and it makes sense for you, you wanna sell it to them, then that's absolutely something that I might be willing to work with you on. You know, and of course they might want something in writing at that time and that's fine. Hey, if they find a buyer, we'll reduce the commission by a half percent or a percent or whatever. I'll give them that in writing. Why? Because what are the chances it's gonna happen? I'm not ready to make a decision. I'm interviewing several agents and we'll let you know when I make a decision. Perfect. Well, if you're interviewing agents, when are those interviews taking place? This is my, one of my favorites for this one. You're interviewing agents, when are those interviews taking place? And it's like they almost don't even know where this is going. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we've got one uh, tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Um, we've got one on Wednesday at 3, and our final interview is on Friday at 2. Perfect. It just so happens. I'm gonna be in your neighborhood this Friday afternoon around 3, 3.30. Since you're already wrapping up your interviews, would it be all right before you make your final decision if I st stop by and take a look at your property, I'll give you my two cents and you can compare it to the two cents of everyone else that you met with and at that point you'll have all of your interviews complete. I'm gonna be in your area anyway so it's no skin off my back, it's not a waste of my time. Oh Jeff, you know, we're not signing anything. No, 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 I don't expect you to sign anything. Yes, you will be. Uh, no, 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 I don't expect you to sign anything. I know you've got to go through these interviews and I'll stop by, because I want to be the last interview, I'll stop by on Friday at three o'clock and it's okay if you don't sign anything. Um, I just want to share with you what we're doing to help more homeowners like you. Does that sound fair? Okay, fine, come on by. Oh, this is nice. I don't have a question, but wanted to relay my immense gratitude to those that donated the three tickets to this event. I'm lucky enough to be able to be there to be one of those winners. This is my first Glover U event and it has been amazing. I very much appreciate the opportunity. Sincerely, Jane in Birmingham. Okay. I worked with an agent at your company already and they stink. Why would I work with you? There's a reason why some agents sell more homes than others. It's not the company that gets the home sold, it's the individual agent's activities. Hello. When you finally get that expired seller on the phone, all they agree to do is, I will do a one-time listing appointment, bring me your buyer, I'm not signing a new listing. Great, can't wait to meet you. I actually get fired up when they say, you can come out, but we're not signing anything. You're probably wasting your time. Oh, let's go, it's on. <laughs> Jeff, I like you, but I'm not sure I have enough equity in my house to be able to pay the 7% fees to realtors. I would end up selling for a loss. Could I sell to an investor or sell by owner? What makes you think by selling by owner you're going to net more? Talk to me about that. What makes you think by selling by owner you're gonna net more? If you have a seller that's considering updating their kitchen, bathrooms, et cetera, to get more money on the selling price, what do you tell them? Do you tell them to do it or not? Well, I follow a three to 5% rule. And so what that means is if they can make repairs to their home that is no more than three to 5% of its value, I'm probably gonna make some of them. For instance, carpet, paint, flooring, um, light fixtures, right? If you figure three to 5% of a $300,000 house is somewhere between nine and $15,000. So if, if we can get all of the carpets replaced for 7,500 bucks, for 10 grand, whatever it is, let's do it. If we can get the light fixtures replaced for, you know, four or $5,000, let's do it. As long as I'm, I'm making recommendations that are not gonna exceed three to 5% of the home's value, oftentimes I make those recommendations if I do believe it's gonna help them sell. Well, how do I know what recommendations to make? Well, first of all, use that rule. The second thing is, is I would make sure you get your hands on every year the Association of Home Builders. I couldn't tell you what it is. I mean, it might be the National Association of Home Builders. Canada probably has one too. There's an Association of Home Builders and they uh, create a report, it's free, you can all access it. We actually created during COVID, uh, some of you may remember this, you've been following us for a while. We created a, a, um, 
website, a landing page called improvemyshelter.com. And we did that because so many people, you could, it, it's still active. Um, we did that because people were uh, staying in their homes and making improvements. So we found a way to generate leads through COVID because people wanted to know if I do this repair, will I get this return? So how we did that, of course, you know, there's some algorithms and things in, in how we designed it, but basically we just used the profile or the, the national home builder um, improvement, home improvement, and it tells you, all right, if you're in the Midwest and you, you know, you get California closets, it's gonna add 87%, you're gonna get, or you're gonna get 87% of that investment back, right? If you're, in, if you're in the Southeast and you, you know, uh, remodel the kitchen, you're gonna get 72% of that return back, right? Well, most, most home improvements, you get a negative return, but there's some that you get a positive. You guys know most of those, flooring, carpet, paint. Objection. My wife and I would like to pray on it before we decide signing with a realtor. Okay. Now, depending on what level of rapport you have, there's two paths you can take this. So when they say to you, Jeff, you know, this is a big decision. My wife and I would like to pray on this before we decide. My response in most cases is, who do you think sent me? <laughs> it sounds to me like you've already done some praying because I'm here. Now, if your rapport level isn't the greatest yet, uh, and we have coaching clients that do this, and we've taught this for years too, well, let's pray together. Because if that is something that's important to them and you respond with that, they actually may respect that. They might say, hey, that's great. You like to pray, we like to pray too. Let's pray together. Great, all right, next. House prices in this neighborhood are on the decline. How do you get this person to list with you when all the news says prices are going to the moon? By the way, I lost my timer. Is that intentional? I had a timer, I lost it. Huh? Oh, time expired, thank you. Well, I got a few more. <laughs> so uh, our break's at three, so let's just go ahead and set the timer for five minutes. I'll get through these in five minutes. Set it for five minutes, please. House prices in this neighborhood are on the decline. How do you get this person to list with you when all the news says prices are going up? All right, thank you for submitting this. Well, first of all, you go back to the CMA, actives, pending, solds, and I would go back to where are they moving and why? Remember, everything's relative. Okay, you're, if you're, if you're going to wait until prices go up, then, then you know, for your current home, because you want to maximize the home's value, then you're going to pay more for the house you buy. If you wait for prices to come down when you go buy and you own a home, you're going to get less for your house. It's all relative. All right, so I would go back to the CMA on that one and make sure they understand what's going on specifically in the neighborhood. Thank you for submitting your questions and objections for Stump the Trump.